you can listen to as many motivational podcasts you want. Um, look, read, like watch motivational YouTube videos, read motivational books, but it's just like, okay, you're shifting your mindset, but like, what are you actually doing about it too? Hey everybody and welcome to In The Den. This week's episode is a really special episode. I am doing a den takeover. I am your host, CJ Bachman, and the den is being taken over by She Handles It. I have a super special guest today with me. That is Miss Delilah D. Delilah, say hi. Hey everyone, happy to be here. <laughs> now Delilah has a very special place in my heart and this is a glow up edition. Delilah is the founder of Delilah and Company, but she also is on the leadership team for the number one online fitness program for women, queen warriors, and leading operations and marketing. Funny enough, Delilah, you also used to work for One SEO. Yes, yes. And, you know, just quick background story about that. So I actually used to be the receptionist at One SEO, but I, I didn't work there too long. It was only a couple months. But when I tell you my time at One SEO really inspired me. I, I mean, you guys were, you guys are family literally for the moment that I started. And just like the, the type of work, court, work culture that you guys, um, just, I was a part of, I've never experienced anything like that. The way how you guys were encouraging, the way I would go to you, I would go to Lance, I just kind of with questions and you guys were always just like motivated me personally and just kind of like going you know going out for my dreams going hard and just like believing in myself like I fell in love with that and I just want to you know before we start into the episode and just kind of get into you know both of us I really want to thank you guys I, re I still remember the day when I quit I was like so nervous I wrote a letter to Liz <laughs> because I really respect you guys you know all jokes aside I really respect you guys I really respect the foundation that you built and just like how you try to give back in so many different ways shapes and form and and you know you know that was kind of even though I've always been involved in social media being you know a millennial growing up with social media it was with me working at one seo just kind of really taught me the the intro the dynamics of marketing what happens behind the scenes how you utilize tech for marketing and just kind of like that opened my eyes to everything to get me to where i am today so i just want to start off again like you know just say how you guys play an integral role in my path and want to thank both of you guys the whole one seo family every time i drive down 95 i see you guys on the ads and i'm just like that's still my family <laughs> well listen no i I, I appreciate that. And I would love to be able to take the credit, but y'all listen, let me tell you, this girl came into one SEO with a vision and with a dream. Um, and now she's a business owner herself. Um, I want the audience to hear, hear a little bit about your story, not your background with one SEO, but your actual story and how, what you're doing now has come about. Yeah. So it started on May 17, 1990. It was a Thursday. <laughs> 5 56 a.m. I came into this world. But fast forward a little bit. Uh, no, just kind of a, just about me in general. Like anyone who knows me, I've always been a social little butterfly. I can make friends with a tree. That's just me. So <laughs> it's just, I've always been like, I, I always knew I wanted to be like my purpose in this world was to call, was to create impact in some way, shape or form, whatever that may be. I always knew that like if I were to be doing any type of work, it has to be impactful work because it's just like, you know, what is to live a life when you're not like, you know, impacting people around you. So even with me, I've always as a teenager, like I was a teenager that was like doing protests. I was a teenager that was highly involved in organizations, you know, went into college, you know, I was highly involved in different organizations in college as well, too. Um, you know, being on the exec boards, being on leadership boards and it just kind of went into my adulthood and my career life too and it's just I've always knew that like I wanted to serve my community some way shape or form because with me so I grew up in North Philadelphia my background I'm a child of a young immigrant mother you know there's a lot of, statistically I should not be where I am today and the thing is I understand my privilege I understand like you know how I was able to achieve a lot of my goals is because of people I surrounded myself with today you know I was fortunate enough that I had people that believed in me I was fortunate enough to have people that like wanted to invest into me I was fortunate enough to have people that like you know, that just like generally wanted to see me grow and win. So it's like, you know, it's something I don't take lightly at all. It's something I, don't, you know, it's, it's like I, something I honor each and every day. And it's just how I operate on a daily. I'm always making sure that I'm intentional about like everything I do, every action I make, every company I work with, everyone that like any projects that I'm aligning myself with is always giving back to my community in some way, shape or form. Because again like I, I again I, I acknowledge my privilege I acknowledge how I've been able to accomplish a lot of things but it wasn't only because of me it was because of the people in my life so if I'm like whatever I'm doing right now the work that I'm doing if I'm the person that's kind of like in someone's life that's able to like uplift them in any way that's able to you know help them scale or rise up in any way if they didn't have fortunate backgrounds growing up you know let me be that person but 
Yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know, I grew up in a really strong family dynamic. Um, you know, my family's always been there. And, then, you know, that's how I am. You know, you know, all the work that I do with the people that I work with, we always have this family dynamic. And I make sure I always treat everyone like family who comes into my life, too. And yeah, <laughs> and that's, your, you, your humility is one of the things that makes you special. But I can tell you, I meet a lot of people. We have a lot of employees here mm -hmm. and I meet a lot of people that have dreams and they have goals, but they're not willing to put the effort in and do what it takes to actually see those dreams come to yeah. fruition. And you have been driven since day one. You knew what you wanted. You knew what you were aiming for. Um, and that's one of the things that I will always remember about you. Let's shift gears a little bit, um, because not only do you have Delilah and company, but you're doing something really special, and that's with Shift World. Mm -hmm. um, Shift World serves a, as, a, as a resource for those whose voices typically stay in the shadows, and it helps to propel the conversation towards a more purpose-driven life. I love that. Can you tell me a little bit more about the mission that you have for Shift World? Yeah, so Shift World, we're a digital content events agency and essentially everything that we do is for the up, you know, just for uplifting, you know, black and brown community. So everything from the events we put on to the media we push out to the merch, we are promoting as well. Everything is to uplift our voices. Everything is just to kind of like understand like we have a purpose in this life. We we can do anything we set our minds to. And, and I like what you said earlier about, you know, just like a lot of people have dreams. Like everyone has dreams. Everyone has these big dreams, what they want to do. But how do you differentiate yourself from being a dreamer and a doer? So a lot of the content we push out, a lot of the messaging we do, and even like with brands that we partner, like we know that we create spaces for, you know, black, brown, indigenous communities, just kind of like having them understand the difference between being a dreamer and a doer. You know, we have everything we have, we need within ourselves to like, you know, want to become the best versions of ourselves. But, you know, a dreamer is just someone is just like, it has these grand dreams, but then they may blame this person, that person as to why they're not like where they are in their lives. But we need to understand the power we have within ourselves. We need to understand we have everything we need, but it's just up to us to believe in ourselves. It's up to us to have the work ethic. It's up to us to like, you know, to push ourselves to want to become a better version of ourselves and just like changing our situation. So with shift world, like the whole concept is shifting your mindset, because again, you can like you can you can you can listen to as many motivational podcasts you want um look read like watch motivational youtube videos read motivational books but it's just like okay you're shifting your mindset but like what are you actually doing about it too so like yeah. you know once you shift your mindset you shift your perspective you know you shift the way you look at the world so it's like it's easy to like you know to want to like be a victim it's easy to want to say this is happening to me because of this or that or you can look at the world but like you know what no like i'm going to take action i'm going to be a doer like this is not how i grew up how my background is like I'm not that's not going to be my future like my past is not gonna reflect my future and I have to I'm gonna have to work harder yes things are not gonna be easy given to me yes but like I can do it because I'm a doer so like you know we're very mindful we're very intentional about the spaces we create the messaging we put out and everything we just push out in general is just letting our people know like you you got it like you you can do this so and like we're just there as a support system for you to help you like you know become the best version of you too yeah I had a previous conversation with one of our employees for Black History Month, Kairos, and he, yeah. he shared his story with us in regards to how there were so many opportunities that he didn't know were available for, you know, to him, that he was kind of pushed more in an athletic direction or pushed more into other directions and didn't realize that, you know, there were so many other options for him yeah. as, you know, a young Black man. And what you're doing with Shift World isn't just, you know, putting merch out there, but it really truly is helping people change the way that they think about their dreams um, and turning them into bite-sized chewable goals that they can actually accomplish. What do you think the difference is in how you were brought up and raised? Because from the moment I met you, at, at no point ever did you ever feel like you weren't going to be this version of Delilah. Like you knew it. You Everything you did was super intentional to get you there, what you wanted to learn, what you wanted to be a part of. What do you think really changed that for you that made you say hey listen I know I can do this honestly I would say my family plays a huge part in that you know I, my the family dynamic that I grew up in you know anytime any of us have been down anytime any of us just haven't been doing good we all show up for each other but we all make sure we always come up on the other side and just kind of like when I went away to college like you know I went to predominantly white institute I went to Penn State University so that was a huge culture shock for me so like just kind of like you know someone who grew up in North Philly went to school in North Philly went to like that's all I experienced was just being around like my community and I go to a PWI and then you know that was just like okay you know it was a culture shock for me at first it was an adjustment for me too and then but like once I realized like 
when, again, it, it, it's, it's understanding my privilege. Understanding my privilege is what really just kind of like, okay, like I need to make the best of the situation. I need to understand like, you know, my mom sacrificed so much for me to be where I am today. And it's just like, for me, it's just, it's a, it's a matter of disrespect that I won't like become the best version of me because of everything my mom went through just for me to be here. Everything my grandparents went through when it came to this country. And it's like everything like, you know, in general, my family, just for us to have this opportunity. So like, for me, it's just like once, and I think it was because when I when I went to Penn State and at first I used to be shy like realistically speaking I used to be shy about my culture because you know like you know I, I'm over here with not a lot of people that look like me in representation so I would like you know tone down my culture wouldn't want to play Spanish music wouldn't want to do anything of that because I wanted to be accepted by my roommates I wanted to be accepted by you know my my college mates but it was me being involved in the the multicultural resource center and then like being involved in organizations and then with those organizations just understanding the power of like understanding my culture being empowered by my culture not being ashamed by my culture but using my culture to like you know it's a part of me so there's no reason to be ashamed of it so like once i really started like diving deep into like understanding my identity understanding who i am and understanding what i represent and it's just like it's just what adds more fuel into like why i have to become the best version of me because just like historically speaking like my people in general didn't really you know just is it, not there so it's like you know the fact that i'm living here right now the fact that my ancestors i'm a, like i'm a representation of like my ancestors that fought for me to be here right now i have to become the best version of me because there's a reason why i'm here today and again i don't take my life for granted at all so that listen <laughs> and that's such a lovely way to look at it and i am so glad that i did not get the toned down version of you because yeah. you are like you are just you know inspiring you are who you are and you're just always a pleasure to be around and you know i've been with you through ups and downs and i've got to see you know all different sides and i'm so glad that every side that i've seen is just the real version of you yeah. Um, and you make it look easy. You really do. But there's definitely some struggles. Um, what are some of the struggles that you found as a woman entrepreneur, a woman business owner? Like, what are some of the, the biggest issues that you feel that you've had to overcome to get to the level of success that you're seeing today? Ooh, baby, imposter syndrome is real. <laughs> When you walk into certain spaces, when you walk into certain boards, and even um, even prior to me just kind of fully investing into like you know being my doing my business because it was something I always did on the side, but you know just even with me because I used to be the director of promotions for iHeartRadio, so I handled all the promotions for the Philadelphia market. Um, for some of our stations but even still like I was the only Latina in the room I was the only you know a lot of times the only woman in the room too so it's just and even navigating as a woman owner I I feel like you know when I try to and but I'm, I'm thankful that I'm in a place in my life right now that I, I'm surrounded by so many incredible women like women business owners I'm able to like you know go for them go to them for advice but before when I first started out like I would go to like you know obviously guys because that's usually what I see that was as business owners asking them for advice and I always felt like they gave me like not the full, not the full correct information or just didn't respect me as an owner myself, didn't respect like what I had to give or, and it's just, it, I, I don't know. I just feel like I have to, like, how do you be assertive without being too assertive, without being looking at it as like a B or anything, but you need to get the job done. But it's just like, but you feel like you have to kiss. And this is what me, me personally, this is not everyone's story, but I feel like, you know, I had to like, you know, bite my tongue a lot because I wanted to maintain certain relationships because like, I felt like, okay, like, but they can open doors to me, but I'll let them talk to me whatever way. But then again, once, once I started getting to my confidence, once I started understanding who I am and understanding like imposter syndrome, like you can go over there, like yeah. we're not going to second guess me like I know what I'm doing I know who I am I know what I have to offer so it's just like that's always been the biggest thing is because a lot of times I've been in spaces because of incredible people in my life who put me in certain spaces but even be, even with me being there I felt like I didn't belong I had a question like who I am I had a question like my purpose I had a question my intelligence I had a question like whether I deserve to be in this room because I'm in a room with people that don't look like me I'm in a room with people who aren't you know, well, I feel like don't have the same background story as me. So that has definitely been my biggest struggle as a as a woman, as a woman of color, as a Latina business owner. It's just like, you know, it's just believing in myself and believing in my confidence. But once I got to that, yeah. There you go. <laughs> and it, you're right. It is, it is super real. And feeling like you belong and feeling like people are going to listen to you and they're going to take you seriously is is hard to, to surmount. Um, and something you just said, that I, I want everybody to kind of hear again. You're, you're not just helping 
the Latino community. You're not just helping women business owners. You're helping pretty well much just any underserved, um, you know, community. So, for example, Shift World is also, uh, you know, philanthropic. They are, you know, donating to so many different meaningful causes and so many different missions. You've donated over 13,000 to different small grassroots organizations. And the focus recently has been on, you know, black liberation. Um, so, you know, feeling like you belong, like you are inserting yourself in so many, you know, different areas. Can you talk a little bit about the special relief teas and the passion that you have for giving back to the community? Yeah. So, I mean, again, I, I always try to use my platform to like, you know, to be intentional about my space. I don't want to just be someone that's just taking up space in the internet. I don't want to be just someone that's just like uploading selfies and not really had any purpose. Again, once I really started understanding my identity, understanding who I am, understanding just like the value I have. And it's just like, I'm very intentional about how I move, who I move with and just like what I do and how I operate. So like, even with with our so we have so the merch collection is just a part of shift work because again we do events we do media but with the merch collection like it really took off especially during the pandemic which i'm definitely grateful for um but with me so it's just like i'm always like how can i use my space to impact during the pandemic so prior to the pandemic i was always doing events people seeing me like you know i worked with different brands we work with tech stars we work with you know startups who i worked with hbo like just providing spaces but because there's no longer events, there's no longer, everything is shut down. How can I do to like still provide impact and, you know, serve my community? Cause there's only so much you can do with the internet. So with my, I've always had a merch line. And the thing is with me, I've always wanted to like have merch, um, like specific merch that was created to give back to a certain cause. So for those, for the donations that happened with, um, as you know, during 2020 was a lot of injustices that happened. Everyone was stuck home. So like you have no other choice but to see everything that was happening with the world unfolding and um, with the pandemic, with the riots, with everything. So it's just like with me, my roommate, my roommate's a black immigrant herself. And we were just like, you know, like just seeing the news, what was happening, it was just like, it was very, like, it was hard. It was heavy on us. And just like, well, how we move, because she's the same way as me. So like, you know, she decided, she was like, hey, like, you know, like, I think I should do a design. So like, you know, we can try to like raise a couple hundred dollars to donate to a small organization or something for like Black Lives. And, you know, can you do it on your website? And I'm like, yes, of course, because this is something that was already on my, like on my business to do that I wanted to do. Like there's different causes I want to support. And then we use the money from the merch, like a hundred percent of all like, you know, um, profit goes towards these certain organizations. So with her, like, so my roommate, she designed, um, so we had different teas, like her, his Black Lives Matter, his Black Lives Matter, her Black Lives Matter, their Black Lives Matter. She designed it. We threw it on my website. And then that was the first of my philopantic um, collection that we released. And it's just like, we, we were like, oh, it's like, we just want to donate a couple hundred dollars. Let's see if we can right. donate a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. I don't know what happened like two <laughs> days later I woke up and I'm just like I looked at my emails and it was like I was getting like I was getting um people coming in from Alaska from Europe from how are know, we gonna Europe, fulfill these like, orders God. how are we gonna get this stuff out yeah orders from everywhere mind you we're at a pandemic everything is kind of shut down the warehouse is like it's not happening as fast as it used to so it was a <laughs> whole thing but you know i'm definitely thankful for it like you know we got like the news picked it up you know and then, so we had so much exposure like new york like it took it off in the media philly it was just kind of everyone was promoting it and then so it's just like you know it was it was during the pandemic and then literally all the profits that we got from that was just like was donated to that was do was donated to different small profit organizations that we were researching that were again that like are on the groundwork that's doing the work but yeah, so, so we let's have pause for a second and, and tell people, Delilah, how can they how can they donate, um, you know, to these causes or how can they purchase the merchandise? Where do they need to go? And we'll, we'll put it in the post for them as well. But, you know, let's just take a moment and tell them now. How can they help? <laughs> So you can go to shiftrail.com and then you can see the specific. So we have different causes that we donate to. So you can like the shirts, you can like purchase those shirts, but for donations, I don't accept any of your donations. If you want to accept, if you want to donate to any of the organizations that we've donated, we have on our website, the organizations that we donated to. So you can do and your research, see if you feel called to, if your heart feels called to it, you can just go on their websites and donate to them. But I don't, I don't accept any donations or anything. You guys can just like purchase the merchandise or you can just go to the organization yep. themselves. <laughs> okay. 
Awesome. Um, and we talked a lot about mindset and that's something that you and I really share in common from my upbringing to your upbringing. Um, you know, there's just something in both of us that says, you know, no matter what the world says about me, um, you know, this is what I'm going to do. This is who I'm going to be. This is what I'm going to go after. Um, and that's something that's super important to me. But there are a lot of people listening here that maybe they're on the fence. Maybe they just started their business. Maybe they have this idea and they haven't gone after it yet. What's some of the advice that you, Miss Delilah D, this you know massive, impactful individual that you've become, what advice do you have for those women who are, are either just getting started or afraid to get started? Let's go for it. You know what? Perfection is like can, can cause you to be a failure. Because there's a lot of people who may hold off because they're waiting for a perfect time. They're waiting for a perfect moment. They're waiting for a perfect product. And it's just like what I've learned, especially in the entrepreneur space, like you just don't learn as you go. So I feel like, you know, a lot of, a lot of, and this is this a lot of my own peers that I know too, like they hold off from becoming, like having something great. They're sleeping on their ideas because they're just like, oh, maybe it's not gonna be too good. Maybe it's not gonna be received well. Maybe like they're just overthinking it and then they hold themselves back. But it's just, you know, just go for it. I think um, I have one time, I forgot what I was reading. And there was this quote and, and, and it stuck to me. And this is why, like, you're going to always see me launch things. You're always going to see me trying things out. But this really stuck to me. So I'm going to ask you, what do you think is the richest place on the earth, CJ? The richest place where? What do you think is the, ri the richest place in the earth? Uh, gosh, I wouldn't even be able to tell you. I mean, I would... Yeah, I wouldn't even be able to give you a guess. So the richest place in the earth is a cemetery. The richest place in the earth is a cemetery because a lot of incredible ideas, a lot of life impacting ideas, a lot of life saving ideas, a lot of money generating ideas die with people because they were too afraid to start because they were too afraid of like thinking it wasn't a good time because they were waiting for a perfect time. And it's just, just kind of thinking about that. Like how many people could have had a cure for a disease or how many people could have like sat you know, the foundation to build generational wealth where they're like their descendants and everything, but they were just too afraid to start or they were too afraid. Like, so I, I, can see why that, I can see why that stuck with you. Like that, yeah. that is impactful. That's better than our, you know, our SEO, uh, you know, kind of quote, which is what's the best place to hide a dead body on the second page of Google. I mean, that's way more impactful. Um, you know, you do a really good job of marketing yourself and you've done a lot of self teaching. Um, of course, you had some experience when you were here as well. But what are some kind of marketing tips that you would give to people who are just getting started and don't really have a lot going on? What are some of the things that you've kind of learned throughout the time with, um, you know, Delilah and company and even shift world to really get the branding out there? Honestly, just be authentic, be authentic to your voice. Don't be afraid of you know, understand who your niche, your niche community is. And then, you know, just do the storytelling. Like storytelling is so important when it comes to marketing, like, especially now because people are so consumed by social media. We're so consumed by media everywhere. But like, there's so many products. There's so many offers that's being thrown at us on a daily basis. You cannot scroll through your feed without seeing some type of sponsored ad. But like, you know, what's going to make people want to buy into your product or your business compared to someone else's? And a lot of times, like a, a lot of people tend to forget it's your voice. A lot of people want to get to like, want to understand the brand. A lot of people want to understand what's the story behind it. Cause a lot of people buy into stories. And then like, you know, and I know a lot of business owners, um, they're scared of being vulnerable on social media. They're scared of under like, you know, just story doing the storytelling aspect and that, you know, that's just really something that drives people in. So it's not even something that you can even use as a marketing tip, but just like, it's really just generally being yourself. And, you know, again, like, you know, at least like with a lot of the companies and the businesses I work with, we rely heavily on storytelling because it's not even like, it's not even a, a pitch. It's really like, this is us. It's authentic. And, you know, people are able to like, you know, they want to be able to relate to your brand. They want to be able to relate to your story. So if you're a mom, who, someone who's been a stay-at-home mom, but, you know, for three, four years, the, the, you know, but you've been having this product that you wanted to work on, but, you know, scared because, you know, you think because you're a stay-at-home mom, you don't have the background, but no, say like, I'm launching this, I'm a stay-at-home mom, I haven't, you know, worked in three years, been dedicating my last three years to my children, and this is the first time me doing something like this, so even like stuff like that, when you launch things, people will be able to relate to that, and they'll be like, wow, like, you know, I'm a stay-at-home mom too, oh, let me go support you, et cetera, et cetera, rather than just like, oh, here's my product, come buy it so it's just yeah it's just like don't be afraid to be vulnerable don't be afraid to share your story and especially if it's related to whatever it is that like whatever it is you're trying to build and i would have to say you're the the queen of vulnerability a lot of yeah. your postings even when you were really kind of 
going through and dealing with, you know, your own imposter syndrome and stuff, you weren't afraid to share that and let people know. You weren't afraid to, you know, not just show the, the fancy side of traveling and stuff like that, but to show them, you know, the struggle and how much it meant to you for the people who were supporting you. So um, I need to get you into the office. We need to go for lunch. Lunch is on me. So come on, uh, let's, let's stop dragging it out. You need to plant your feet long enough to come in and have lunch. <laughs> oh, crack it. I'll be there soon. I'll be there soon. <laughs> All right. I'm going to hold you to it. But I thank you so much, Delilah, for being here. Everybody, we will put um, all of the ways that you can support uh, the initiatives that Delilah is a part of, including how you can purchase merchandise that she has out there. But she's doing some phenomenal things, and it's a wonderful story of someone who really followed their dreams. Delilah, thanks again for being here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you. <laughs> we will talk soon. Thank you.